Brent's to deny Brent's the kiss. Okay but we that, didn't meet at cool. Civis. We did not if, meet if, at Civis. If he's okay with that, then that's cool. Wait, we did not meet no. at all. No. What else you got? Oh, you know I got stuff. Okay, well, come on. Okay. Let's, now, bring, did bring you or did you not? But it's a waste of my time because okay, you're not exactly. telling and the truth. It was truth. a waste of your time then, too. Hey guys and welcome back to Little Black Book. You already know what time it is. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share and subscribe and click on that bell button for the notifications so that you can know when we're uploading our next video. Um, and for those who are returnees, you baby. Listen, are you mad or you mad or you lean? A gege. Don't make that squirrel boy error. Listen, if you can't handle the heat in the kitchen, you need to get out. If you can't handle the heat in the kitchen, Chile, you need to get out. Ow, you understand? Listen, let's get into the review. We're going to be talking to you guys about um, the London and Divine. So I'm going to give you a little breakdown of what happened. Um, and just kind of give you a little scenario. Not scenario, but like give you a little breakdown of London and Divine. Uh, um, and just kind of give you what actually happened in the actual show. Um, so let's start from the very beginning. One of the first things that I actually noticed was when they were doing the reactions. One person you want to ride off in the sunset with. Of course it would be you. Okay. I mean, why would you even question that? <laughs> Have your strawberry moments. So that seems like that really bothers you. It made me jealous. His face change. She's not very happy. Um, suddenly the face becomes very, str very strong, and she's not she's not smiling anymore. You know what I mean? It's no longer fun. And at that point, I clocked. Okay, this girl really just wants to break these two. She just wants to win, like at all costs. And the winning for her is making sure that if she couldn't get London the way that she wanted him to be taken, then uh, yeah, do you know what, Divine, you can't have him either. Because I'm, I'm a person that wants to take the whole board off the game if I'm not winning. Do you know what I mean? Um, and like I said, there's two ways to play the game every time. There's there's the game that you have a game, you know, that's confidence and, you know, uh, an exuberance and abundance. And there's a game where it's like there's manipulation, there is lies, there is cheating, there's stealing, all that kind of stuff. Falsifying information where I don't agree with. And one of the things that I noticed about Alexis also as well that, you know, she keeps saying this, I've got receipts. We'll come on to that a little bit later on, but she goes, I've got receipts. And, da -da -da, and she's done this on three occasions and not one time has she pulled up a receipt. Oh. What else you got? Oh, you know I got stuff. Okay, well, come on. Okay. Let's, now, bring, did bring you or did you not? But it's a waste of my time because okay, you're exactly. not telling and the truth. It was truth. a waste of your time then, too. Yeah, it was in okay. hindsight. It was. Well, move on. You because and you're together. Not, yeah. That's dangerous. Somebody who keeps pulling and saying, I've got receipts, but on every occasion doesn't pull receipts, more than likely is not telling the truth. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, and what was interesting for me was that the focus on. On, on Alexis when she says something particularly in the reaction video where she said um, London has allowed um, London has allowed another man to come and collect his girl number one Alexis you're nobody's girl remember that number two why is it a folk I know it's a reaction video going back over the old one but it's like to allow somebody to come and collect you and I'm like bro this is the same kind of language she was using throughout the whole of the journey. And if I'm Brent, I'm listening to this, and remember at the dinner table at your yard, when she was asked about this London guy, again, that same kind of energy was used then. So in, if I'm Brent, I'm starting to pick up on the energy. This girl's not feeling me, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Like, all the way throughout, like, the senses must be tingling. Like, this girl really ain't feeling the kid. Like, there's something on this girl's mind, and it ain't me. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's what I would start deeping. But I don't think Brent has deep that just yet. Where did he come from? I'm like, is this your bodyguard? Is this your poodle? Man, we ain't got to go there, bro. I'm not trying to go there. Okay. Real, real. They just don't disrespect me, bro. That's all. Adding on to that again, continuing that focus with, um, with London. A part where London goes, you know, um, I mean, where did this guy come from? Da -da -da, and then, you know, where it cuts to the scene where they're in, you know, the cabin and that. And she just starts smiling. And again, it's like, it's almost as if when he did that, it's like it was affirming her energy that this guy wanted me, this guy, this, this guy desired me. And there's a power in that where we, some people get a validation for the fact that somebody wants them. And I, kept, I said this other one in the, when I was explaining about Alexis that there's an egotistical mentalist game that she plays where her validation comes from not necessarily bedding the guy, but actually from the fact that there's a desire from the guy, there's an intention from the guy that wants her, that she feeds off. Do you get me? Rather than the actual action. 
And it's like when she saw that, you know, he was saying, obviously, where did this guy come from? Again, it's like, you're fighting for my love, like Jimmy was saying, you're fighting for my love. And it's like, it's boosting the ego. Makes me feel good when you're doing that. And then, you know, the next thing I kind of noticed was that, obviously, like, towards the end of that, I just kind of noticed that, um, you know, Alexis's hand was on his, on his leg. And it was like, I mean, it, in a normal phase, it would, look, it would look like it's something cute gesture or cute kind of physical touch. But for me, I just saw it and I was like, it feels like control. It feels like control. It feels like that hand is always there. This is my presence to let you know I'm always here, in it? Like, don't say or do anything that will mess us up. And the only reason why I said that is because I watched the reunion and I kind of saw how she's behaving. But that hand and that leg, didn't. it, it, it looked natural, but in the sense of it, it looked like there was an intent behind it which was not of the nature of I love you or I like you or you know I'm, I'm affectionate but rather in the case of I gotta make sure I keep my hand, my eyes on you, keep my hand on you, keep that pressure on you so you don't do or say anything that is outside the limits of what I've ordained for. And that just could be me, maybe the way I'm seeing things, maybe you have a different opinion, comment down below. I gotta ask you, how do you feel after watching that? <laughs> I let her know straight up <laughs> and say, hey, I'm choosing you, but if you're not choosing me, that's fine. Just let me know. I, I kind of gave it, made it easy on her, okay. you know what I'm saying, to be honest and be real. And she said, no, that's not the case. I just saw Brent's energy just was all off. I don't know about you, but when your head is always down and you're always looking down and, you know, you're rarely engaging, um, eye contact that kind of lets me know that something's not quite right yeah um, that I know you're quiet but this doesn't seem right almost as if he's avoiding conflict almost as if he's avoiding speaking up because it would cause conflict almost as if like he's, he's, he's asking like like I said that I, I said loosely again the abused boyfriend who's been abused by their girlfriend do you know what I mean like it's that kind of behavior and energy is given off to me in the sense of like he fulfill, it's almost as if he's given all his power over to Alexis and she's now in control and that's just, and that's I don't want to say lapdog but that's like you know that's her minion now like she does what she wants to do with you kind of thing and it's like that head down it's like somebody who's got anxiety with the world who's doesn't know how to operate in the world you know that's that doesn't want to see nobody's face doesn't want no trouble keeps looking down and it's like bro why are you like this what's the energy so off bro what's going on what's really going on Brent Brent you understand? Connections. Afterwards, you know, you really need to kind of recalibrate yourself, you know, and we just said, look, let's leave that behind because it's still stuff that comes up. I mean, like the kiss with Brand. I mean, you, you're still going to feel some type of way as a man. Devon, London told you several times that you were his, his ride or die. Did it give you a sense of security or did you have doubts on it? Um, it just, it made me look a little closely in the situation because it made me think... If he thinks I'm his ride or die, then, you know, that could easily, I could easily be taken for granted because he could say, okay. Um, we are and have been enjoying one another. Everything happened so fast. Um, but I think after, I guess the very first time we said, all right, let's kind of figure out. I'm, I'm feeling great. You know, um, I like the fact that we were able to come to terms with, with, with everything that had went on and let's. And obviously, as they were talking, I just kind of noticed that as well. Um, like I said, I noticed that whenever Divine and London are talking, whenever Div whenever London's talking, he's talking to Tommy, but Divine's focusing on Tommy. When Alexis was talking, um, Brent sometimes looked at Alexis, but kept his head down the majority of the time. But when he was talking to Brent, Alexis was looking at him. And for me, this is what I say about the controlling. It's like she was boring her eyes into it to make sure that he doesn't say anything he shouldn't say. Because really she should have been facing Tommy, just like Divine and London were. But it's almost as if like she's trying to make sure to confirm what we're going to say here. We're going to be a unified front. Um, you know, like consistently looking at him, you know, just turning. Like she has to turn all this way to kind of focus on him and keep sure she's looking at him. And I was just like, ah, Saturn don't feel right with that look. Because you're having to crack up your neck to do this. Michael Jackson, twist up your neck. Ah, okay, eh, eh, eh. All right, anyway, if you don't know Joe, you don't know Joe. But, um, so that was for me, that was like, okay, um, Saturn 800% right here. 
Um, and Brent needs to, Brent's not feeling 100% correct. That was what I was thinking. Why she was consistently looking at him is because, again, she wants to put, she wants to put on this unified front. She wants to make sure that they're putting on a one image. You know what I'm saying? Because she needs to make sure she looks like she's winning in the view, in the eyes of London and, and, and Divine. She needs to look like she's winning because remember she talked a lot of trash about this, that, 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 that. And she needs to show face now for her that, hey, listen, after I said all of that, I've still got the man. Yeah, I've still got my man. But if she hasn't got that, then what she got? Because remember, that's the whole thing, the reason why they're on Ready to Love. That was the whole chat, that was the whole of her winning the game. But unfortunately, she's not winning because they're one, not really together. Um, and we see that later on, where there's a little bit of a mis miscommunications. But, you know, we see all of that. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, for me, when I watch it with Alexis, I'm just like, ah. Oh, you know, that consistently turning to look at him was just make sure you're under control, make sure you present a unified image. If he says anything that's a bit off, she can do some eye contact like, mm, 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 that's not correct. Do you know what I mean? So all of that, that's what I felt was going on when she was turning to look at him as well. Um, she must have said like, you should look at me, ask me for confirmation first before you say it. You know what I'm saying? If it's going to be, if it's going to be a little bit touchy, look at me. Ask me for com you know, confirmation, I'll let you know, kind of thing. Um, Divine actually um, was talking at the time and, you know, Alexis intervenes on their conversation. And when I saw that, I watched Brent's face. Brent actually drops his head um, again. So he was looking at the surroundings, looking at, obviously, what was going on in the conversation um, towards Tommy and towards Drummond Divine. The moment Alexis intervenes and interjects with her particular viewpoint, his head drops and you can see that it's like again avoiding conflict and maybe it could be also because i'm just going to give a theory here he has been in an abusive relationship and i wonder if he's seeing traits of that and that's turning him off and that's keeping him i guess quiet and and and, and pausing him from actually being involved in a conversation because he might be a little bit um concerned um, in regard to the fact that this is happening because he's seeing different as aspects of, um, you know, Alexis. This is a new aspect of Alexis, you know, it's weird, bro. Like, because to see her do this, like, like again, you're hearing her talk about London. Then she's interrupting now, and now she's talking about, again, about who? London. And it's like, maybe his brain's just starting to tick. You know what I mean? But when I saw that, I was like, hmm. Um... And, you know, I did kind of understand Alexa's point of view in terms of the fact that, you know, when she said about stranding the fence and London chose divide potentially because, I, and I've said this to, because me and London actually had a conversation, I said to him as well, like, you know, the moment you have two connections, you are going to be perceived as a game player. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't care how many connections you have, but the moment you've got more than one, you are going to be a game player because you cannot be true to one the whole way through. And true does not mean necessarily that you didn't tell them the truth. It means that your attention is not fully on that individual. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, your attention is not. And in the end, you end up being a game player in some shape, form or fashion. Do you know what I'm saying? So I did agree with, um, you know, Alexis there in that point in the sense of the fact that, you know, um, she doesn't accept him straddling the fence. Do I accept the fact that she made him choose the vine? I mean, look, even if it's not true, this is why I said about London being more protective and actually saying something and actually disrespect, disregarding what she's saying by saying something. Because as much as Divine may be comfortable thinking that Alexis is a liar, what they must understand is that, what they must understand is this, regardless, your brain is going to take this information in, you know what I mean? Every word is a seed. And so it begins to germinate and take place. Now, Divine may say, oh, I'm not going to take that word. I don't believe anything she says. But trust me, all these things, every single time it's being spoken about, it's going to come up. Because already, I already know, uh, um, obviously, he, when he said, obviously, that the problem with Brent's situation, the kiss thing, when it comes up, you know, that's an issue. Why would that be an issue? Do you know what I'm saying? But it's because the word has become a seed. It's because that becomes an image in your brain and you can't get rid of it. So the words that are going in, as much as you want to block it, they are going to play on the mind of Divine. So that's why I said he needs to, that's why I was saying that. And he did address it, he just went on to say that, like, you know what, Divine is not my second choice. You know, and then he went on to say about the fact that, um, you know, that's why he said nobody's his first or second choice. Well, I have to disagree. Because once you mention 
I would ride off in the sunset with you, you've made a choice of who's first and second. Permanently. Because for you to say I would ride off in the sunset but make you my second choice, that doesn't make sense. Do you get it? So I agree that, you know what, in the real world, you don't mention who's first, who's second, yeah? People can often feel that by the energy you're giving, and you can also feel that by the fact that, you know what, boom. Um, there are a lot of smoke screens that are when dating, when we're dating in the world, because not, you can't see everything that's going on. You can't see who they're talking to. You only, you only know what they're talking to you about. Do you get what I'm saying? A second choice. It was two different lanes, and I was really trying to figure out which way I wanted to go. I never told either one of these women who was number one and who was number two. You know, and the truth of the nature is, is that, you know, London didn't choose quickly enough. And that will always look like he didn't make a choice because Alexis pretty much bound out before he did. So it will look like, it may not be, it will look like, it will look like he didn't choose Divine first but chose her because Alexis bound out. Now, Alexis is using that as leverage to really get at London by saying, you know, ah, oh, you know, if it wasn't me, if I hadn't bowed out, you'd have never definitely gone after Divine and da-da-da. Because again, Alexis wants to prove the point. That's, that's the only thing. She just wants to prove the point that, listen, London, you chose Divine as second choice because if she, if she can get London to admit that, she wins. It's a bit like Reva and Tondi. It's like she wins. Once you, once you admit that or, you know, show a hint of the fact that you chose Divine as second choice, she wins. It's like, yeah, I've got the power because actually you didn't choose Divine on your own choice. You chose Divine because I didn't want you. Deep it. Do you know what I'm saying? So, again, it's about power for her. That control. That ego. Interesting because when London said, you know, this is how London operates. It was interesting how Ashima and I think it was... Um, Tondi looked at each other, um, was like, oh, and then looked back at the situation. And it's like they don't believe what London's saying. Do you know what I'm saying? But they're friends of, um, uh, of, uh, they're friends of, um, uh, you know, Alexis anyway. So they are bound to take her side and everything. But still, it was quite telling to see how they reacted um, to this situation as well and what he said. Um, bearing in mind, obviously, as well, because Alexis had already gone and told. Um, the girls, obviously there was a kiss that happened, etc. Et so I'm sure their minds towards them would look different anyway, um, in that regard. It was also interesting as well because when they played back the video of the, the wine cellar, where you know Alexis was getting basically she got she got finished by Divine when Divine said about um, you know you kissed a man and he showed you his ass da, da, da. and in the reactions you see her face like go flat she's just not she's not happy she's not again and the further reinforcing the fact that listen this girl is just about it's not about experience it's all about winning it's all about winning it's not about taking part it's about winning and taking that man and getting it for herself and taking what you want you know what I'm saying. That's what it was about. It's about that power element. And when she was being embarrassed with that reaction video, she didn't smile. And I was like, oh, okay, 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 okay. You know. And it was interesting because at that point, Brent was also watching, chewing the side of his mouth, basically, um, from the inside. Um, so he was watching hard um, to see what was being said. Um... Brent, I got to ask you, how do you feel after watching that? Uh, uh, <laughs> a really concerning thing for me was Brent's energy again when he was asked, Brent, how do you feel about the kids situation? You know, how do you feel about, I mean, how do you feel about this whole situation? And he was like, and even Jimmy was like, say something. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, bro, like there's such a nonchalant reaction to what's going on. It's concerning. Bro, are you on drugs? Are you drinking? Like, are you being abused? Like, that's what you start automatically start thinking because the person's behavior is so abnormal to the reaction of the, what was being asked. The nonchalantness, the, the, the lack of bite to come back and answer the question showed me that something wasn't quite right with Brent. You know what I mean? That, that he just felt like maybe he's like, he's like almost as if like he was on that show by force. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, something wasn't correct with him. And that's why I felt a little bit scared for him. 
um, you know, there was a lack of words that he actually mentioned in that first initial response to Alexis's, um, the Alexis kiss or whatever with London. Um, obviously he knew about the kiss, but it's just like, family, it wasn't, it wasn't okay. I mean, if you see, he reacted more to when um, Divine and him kissed and he smiled almost. And it's like Alexis also turned around to him and smiled as well. And I don't know if that was because she's smiling because it's almost as if, again, it's another boot in the chest towards the London and, and Divine situation, maybe. I don't know. But it's like she was turning around to almost smile with, you know, with um, uh, Brent. And I don't, it didn't look, like, it didn't make sense why she was smiling so much. I mean, what happened? She told me that she locked her keys and uh, London was there, you know, he got the tow truck or whatever, and he basically kissed her. What was interesting as well is the, the careful words that he also used when describing the kiss situation. He said, and you know, when, when um, Alexis explained it to him, when Alexis explained it to him, she said that he kissed her. Now these words are so important because the words chosen here could have been they kissed which would mean a share and a duality of the blame. But there wasn't that. What there was, was an accusation that there was a kiss that was initiated fully from one side to the other. Now, Alexis wanted a kiss, or, but did not yearn for a kiss. Um, and, and, was, and, and that participation wasn't because she was originally thinking to have that kiss, but no, it was stating that he kissed her, meaning he made that move, it wasn't a joint move. He made that move. And again, it puts the blame squarely at his feet as well, um, which was interesting as well. So it releases almost Alexis from the blame here that she was like, hey, I, just got, I got kissed. I didn't go for the kiss. I didn't move to you. You know, same thing with um, Reva did the exact same thing where she said, obviously, no. And Mario called me. Like, it's not like it's, not, it's, like, it's almost like some people would say, oh, we called each other. No, no, you called me. Meaning that the ball's in your court. The, the blame could be on your side. I, I, I was here. Don't, don't bring me into this. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's when, you know, we hear, we get this fabricated story now. I don't want to say fabricated. We get this story that's interwoven where Ashima comes out and says, listen, that night that you're saying, um, Alexis, that you were kissed um, was the same night that myself, Darren, Tondi, and Brent were in the house. And you came in and immediately, immediately said, look, London's kissed me. And at this point, I said to her again, if London, if Alexis is lying and she's pathological because she's really planned this to make it seem as if London has done this. If London's also lying, then he's also got a lot of explaining to do with Divine because, bro, it, you could have admitted this and moved on. Do you know what I'm saying? So, who's lying? Somebody lying. And this should have been dealt with by Ready to Love, but it didn't. Oh, you because and Brent together. I, no, no, no. You, you and Brent together. Yes, we are. And, okay, we're, and cool. we're doing fine. Are they together? Oh, damn. Who, who wants to know? Who's asking? <laughs> I'm the asker. Relax, relax, oh. relax, relax. Because it wasn't established that they were together. Okay. And this is where it became interesting because the initial reaction of Alexis was to turn around. Boom! What do you mean? Who wants to know? Like, anybody can get the smoke, you know? Don't ask dumb questions, that kind of thing, right? And that was instant defensiveness, cattiness, um, aggression, because it's like, you're touching a nerve right now. Like, this, one's got nothing to do with you, and two, I wasn't talking to you, and number three, how dare you poke holes in my story? Don't you dare, do you know what I'm saying? Don't you dare sit back, keep quiet, and relax. So when that question is then asked, um, you know, Alexis says, yeah, yeah, we are a couple, yeah, we are, we are together, but, when Brent is getting prepared to answer the question, when Tommy asks him to, he actually moves forward. It comes forward and readjusts himself and then goes, yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we date him. Are you all together? Yes, we are. They're together. Brent, are y'all together? We're, we're dating. Oh. We're dating. That's okay. the same, yeah. Uh, we're that's dating. That's not together. Okay. We're dating, we're dating. And then Alexis says, Looks, Alyssa looks at him like, look, that's the same thing, like, couple thing, like, again, quickly trying to save face, because like, it's almost like that married woman that doesn't want anyone to know that her husband has been, inf has been you know, has been um, unfaithful, because his image, it's the reputation, don't embarrass me in front of my friends kind of thing, and that's what she's portrayed there, so that look, she was looking at her, like, what do you mean, what, what are you doing, it's the same thing, 
Like, and she had to even said that herself. So again, she had to even correct him again. And that then led me back to what I said about earlier on where she kept on looking at him while she was talking. It was not to do the fact that she's a, more endearing. It was a, a measure of control. It's like to make sure you don't say anything outside of what we need to be talking about. Do you get me? Point as well, she seemed to even look up and down at him as if, what are you doing? Don't even think about it kind of thing. And that for me was like, whoa, I was like, Alexis, okay, this girl is moving a bit mad. Yeah, she's moving a bit mad. We need to check up on her, make sure she's doing okay because she's moving very, very mad. You know what I'm saying? Um, when he obviously says, obviously, we are dating, it's the most animated he is all night. He comes forward, he starts talking with his hands, all that kind of stuff was going on at that time. He's showing the fact that actually, do you know what? I'm actually interested in this part of the topic of the conversation. And as he's clearing it up, he's not making it any better. They are dating, they're seeing where it's going. And then Alexis takes over control of the, the dialogue again, to, again to, to, to do damage limitation and actually correct what the image of what they have at the moment is and what they say they have. Do you know what I'm saying? Covering up the fact that there's a question that was being asked which you couldn't answer. Are you together? No, we're dating. So, okay, then you're not together, you're just dating. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, in that particular percent. And I think, for obviously, some people might consider dating together, but you know, that, that for me was a big telling thing there, man. Um, because, you know, while she was explaining that as well, you just watch her mouth snarl. She's like, you know, we're dating. And then her hands, dum, 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 dum. It's like, all again, it's part of her regime to kind of, again, pull together the wall over our eyes like say listen i'm building this image this reputation you're gonna buy into it but we're not gonna buy into it okay because at the end of the day it's a false image you're presenting that's not truly what's going on cuz my man doesn't even look happy bruv like he's like brent's looking like he's not eating in years cuz like you know what i'm saying i shouldn't say that ask him are you second best you know and you watch jimmy and kimba and their looks at each other are classical their looks at each other let you know the full time what everyone thinks we don't believe you, Brent. We believe that you are second best. Yeah. And you need to vacate this thing. Do you get me? Um, yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. Okay. I guess obviously the question would be then, why would Alexis lie if that's the case? I mean, the reason why Alexis can... There is something that she's gonna get out of it. One, she if she can break if she can break up London and Divine, she still wins. Um, you know, if she can't have it, nobody can. Um, and also, it's what it creates a air of you know limelight, hogging you know screen time because whatever you do, you know it's gonna be highlighted, and therefore it's about maximum exposure so that in the future you can do what you need to do. Do you get me? Who is the liar? Do you get me? Because even when um, you know. She was trying to bring up the point, the fact that you didn't, you didn't meet me then, you didn't meet me. He said, no, I didn't meet her. Um, but again, it wasn't very convincing on London's side in terms of actually what he said. So yeah, guys, make up your mind. Let us know down below in the comment section what you think and feel. Um, and we will be sure to hit you up um, in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on that, button, that bell button for notifications of uploads. And you ain't got the minerals, baby. I appreciate your goal. Stay black, baby.